Hey guys, happy Thursday. Uh, by popular demand, we're going to start today's video by checking out my fridge. I don't know why you guys want to see my fridge. I don't know if you mean the outside or the inside. Um, here are a bunch of random invitations to things and uh, magnets from all the places that my wife and I have been. That's pretty cool. Um, also, I have, you know, pictures of my family, some old students. I got this lovely award uh, from school. So just random things like that on my fridge. And then inside, let's check it out. Nothing exciting at all. <laughs> I mean, a sausage for, for dinner tomorrow. Um, this cheese board that my wife begged us to get that we haven't eaten yet. She likes cheese. Um, water, milk, nothing really great. A lot of veggies going on here, you know, gotta have an avocado always on deck. Um, some takeout food that's probably too old. Check this out. This is great. This is, uh, mozzarella. They're like little balls of mozzarella that you eat with a tomato. That's my favorite snack. Um, we also got these cookies because we are going to do the TikTok challenge where you make like cookie cereal. Uh, nothing else that I'm seeing that's random. Oh, this is a cool item. My wife got me a big thing of Chick-fil-A sauce because I'm obsessed with this, but I haven't used it yet. But I could eat Chick-fil-A sauce with anything. Um, yeah, there's nothing... Uh, great, always gotta have some some salsa. I've got like way too much cream cheese. Yeah, that's it for the fridge. So we're gonna run back upstairs now through my house so that we can do our lesson for today. Can you hear Stevie running? And now you can unmute the TV. <laughs> All right, and now we're in the office uh, with my giant monstera plant. Cool, cool. And my messy desk. And we're gonna get started. And I just realized that I'm filming this the wrong way because normally I film it wide. And yeah, okay. I don't know why I just showed you my fridge. So drop in the comments what random thing you'd like to see in my house uh, next lesson all right um to be honest i've only gotten through paces work for today y'all did a great job with the the journal everyone was writing 10 lines um some of you skipped the multiple choice and you just need to highlight what you think the right answer is um if you want to reread the poem that's great you can just search nothing gold can stay by robert frost um all right and you all did a good job of answering number one. You had to give me how Johnny feels about Dallas and how Pony feels about Dallas. All right, let's get to reading. Let's let's uh, knock this work out for today. <clears throat> we left off on page 68 at the top. We're just going to read through 68 to 72. And we have two questions to answer in our exit ticket. Our two questions are, how does Johnny view Pony Boy's family? That's kind of where we left off in our reading yesterday. And number two is we're going to see a letter in this scene. Um, and what is it mostly about? What's the central idea? All right. So before we start to read on 67, we actually have our text evidence about how Johnny feels about S Pony's family. I would pause the video and highlight Johnny looked at me quickly. He says, Soda kind of looks like your mother, but he acts like your father blah, 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 that whole, that, that big section. Um, th those are just a lot of small details that Johnny notices about Pony's family. Um, and at the end of it, he basically just says, Pony doesn't act like anyone in his family. He's a very unique person. Okay, so your evidence should come from page 67. You should write, Johnny used Pony Boy's family as they are all similar in different ways, like 
Derry is like his dad and Soda is like his mom, all this stuff, but Pony doesn't really fit in. That's the takeaway that we should get. All right. <clears throat> That was easy. We didn't even read yet. We already answered a question. All right, let's read, and we are listening for the central idea of the letter. 68. Johnny shrugged. Yeah, he said with a sigh. I guess we're different. Shoot, I said, blowing a perfect smoke ring. Maybe they are. By the fifth day, I was so tired of baloney that I nearly got sick every time I looked at it. So keep in mind, guys, they can only live off of what they got from the, the grocery store. We had eaten all our candy bars in the first two days. I was dying for a Pepsi. I'm what, what you call, I'm what you call, I'm what you might call a Pepsi addict. I drank them like a fiend and going five days without one was about to kill me. Drop in the comments, guys. What's something that you are missing so much that maybe you haven't had in a while because of being stuck at home in quarantine? So for me, I am missing my regular Dunkin' coffee or Starbucks coffee, not in the house. I'm going crazy with just regular coffee in the house. So what are you missing? Drop it in the comments. <clears throat> uh, Johnny promised to get some if we ran out of supplies and had to get some more, but that didn't help me right then. I was smoking a lot more than I usually did, I guess because it was something to do. Although Johnny warned me that I would get sick from smoking so much. We were careful with our cigarettes. If that old church ever caught fire, there'd be no stopping it. On the fifth day, I had to read up to Sherman's siege of Atlanta in Gone with the Wind. Johnny had owed me 150 bucks from poker games. I'd smoked two packs of camels and as Johnny had predicted, got sick. I hadn't eaten anything all day and smoking on an empty stomach doesn't make you feel great. I curled up in a corner to sleep off the smoke. I was just about to sleep when I heard from a great distance a long, low whistle uh, that went off in a high sudden note. I was too sleepy to pay any attention, although Johnny didn't have any reason to be whistling like that. Um... He was sitting on the back steps trying to read Gone with the Wind. I had almost decided that I had dreamed the outside world and that there was nothing real but bologna sandwiches and civil war and the old church and the mist and the valley. It seemed to me that I had always lived in the church or maybe had lived during the civil war and somehow got transplanted. This shows you what a wild imagination I have. A toe nudged me in the ribs. Glory, said a rough but familiar voice dog is breaking in right now. Can I help you guys? You see this stuff? This is what happens. Can I help you? You're interrupting class. You can't just walk into my classroom like this. Stevie, sit down. Sit. Sit down. Oh, he listened. Can you sit? That's not sitting. Can you guys wait till I'm done like good children? I'm really sorry guys, I'm really sorry. Also sorry that this room is covered in boxes right now. Okay. <clears throat> a toe nudged me in the ribs. Glory, said a rough but familiar voice. He looks different with his hair like that. I rolled over and sat up rubbing the sleep out of my eyes and yawning. Suddenly I blinked. Hey Dally. Hey pony boy, he grinned down at me. Or should I say sleeping beauty? I never thought I'd live to see a day when I'd be so glad to see Dallas Winston. But right then, he meant one thing, contact with the outside world. And it suddenly became real and vital. How soda pop? Are the fuzz after us? Is Derry all right? Do the boys know where we are? What? Hold on, kid. Dally broke in. I can't answer everything all at once. You two want to get something to eat first? I skipped breakfast and I'm about to be starved. I'm about to starve. You're starved. Johnny was so indignant, he nearly squeaked. I remembered the baloney. Is it safe to go out? I asked eagerly. Yep. Dally searched his shirt pocket for a cigarette, and finding none, he said, Got a cancer stick, Johnny Cake? Johnny tossed him the whole pack. The fuzz won't be looking for you around here, Dally said, lighting up. I think you've lit out for Texas. 
I've got Buck's T-Bird parked down the road a little. Gosh almighty, boys. Ain't you been eating anything? <sighs> Johnny looks startled. Yeah. Whatever gave you the idea we ain't. Dally shook his head. You're both pale and you've lost weight. After this, get out in the sun more. You look like you've gone through the mill. I started to say, look who's talking, but decided it'd be safer not to. Dally needed a shave. A stubble of colorless beard covered his jaw, and he looked like he was the one who'd been sleeping in his clothes for a week. Fitz, can you sit down and hold butts in the camera? Fitz, sit down. These kids. Anyway. But it was safer to not get mouthy with Dally Winston. All right, page 70, two more pages. Hey, Pony, he fumbled with a piece of paper in his back pocket. I got a letter for you. A letter from who? So this is gonna be our answer to number two. As I read, guys, what is this letter mostly about? Find one line that tells us the central idea. A letter from who? The president, of course, stupid, is from soda. Soda pop, I said bewildered, but how did he know? He came over to Bucks a couple of days ago for something and he found your sweatshirt. I told him I didn't know where you were, but he didn't believe me. He gave me this letter and half his paycheck to give to you. Kid, you ought to see Derry. He's taking this mighty hard. I wasn't listening. I leaned against the back side of the church and read. Pony boy. Well, I guess you got into some trouble, huh? Derry and me nearly went nuts when you ran out like that. Derry is awful sorry he hit you. You know he didn't mean it. And then you and Johnny turned up missing, and what with that dead kid in the park and Dally getting hauled into the station? Well, it scared us something awful. The police came by to question us, and we told them as much as we could. I can't believe little old Johnny could kill somebody. I know Dallas knows where you are, but you know him. He keeps his trap shut, and he won't tell me anything. Derry hasn't got the slightest notion of where you're at, and it's nearly killing. I wish you'd come back and turn yourselves in, but I guess you can't since Johnny might get hurt. You sure are famous. You got a par paragraph in the newspaper even. Take care to say hi to Johnny for us. Soda Pop Curtis. Okay, so guys, in your own words, uh, or I guess in the text, you're just going to copy and paste. What is Soda Pop's uh, biggest point he's trying to get across from this letter? So, um, there's, there's a few like main ideas, but I think... Uh, it's mostly <clears throat> them like missing him, them, you know, feeling bad about what happened, them wanting him to come home, things like that, okay? He could improve on his spelling, I thought, after reading it three or four times. How come you got hauled in, I asked Dally. Shoot, kid, he grinned wolfishly. Them boys at the station know me by now. I get hauled in for anything that ever happens on our turf. While I was there, I kind of let it slip that y'all were heading for Texas, so that's where they're looking. He took a drag on his cigarette and cussed it good-naturedly for being a cool. Johnny listened in admiration. You sure can cuss good, Dally. Sure can, Dally agreed whole wholeheartedly, proud of his vocabulary. But don't you kids get picking up my bad habits. He gave me a hard rub on the head. Kid, I swear if you don't look like it if you don't look like you with your hair cut off. It used to look tough. You and Soda were the, had the coolest hair in town. I know, I said sourly. I look lousy, but don't rub it in. Do y'all want to eat something or not? Johnny and I leapt up. You better believe it. Gee, Johnny said wistfully. It was sure good to get in the car again. Well, Dally drawled. I'll give you a ride for your money. Dally always did like to drive fast as if he didn't care whether where he was going or not. And we came down the and we came down the red dirt road off Jay Mountain doing 85. I like fast driving and Johnny was crazy about drag races, but we both got a little green around the gills when Dally took a corner on two wheels with his brakes screaming. So he just like was driving really fast instead of being on all four wheels. He was driving so fast the two wheels went up when he drove. That would make me sick too. Um, maybe it was because we hadn't been in a car for so long. 
We stepped out of the Dairy Queen, and the first thing I got was a Pepsi. Johnny and I gorged on barbecue sandwiches and banana splits. Glory, Dallas said, amazed, watching us gulf the stuff, stuff down. You don't need to make like every mouthful is your last. I got plenty of money. Take it easy. I don't want you to get sick on me. Ooh, and I thought I was hungry. Johnny merely ate faster. I didn't slow down until I got a headache. I didn't tell y'all something. Dally was finishing his hamburger. The socius and us are having an all-out war all over the city. That kid you killed, he had plenty of friends. And it's all over town. It's socius against Greece. We can't walk alone at all. I started carrying a heater. A gun. Dally, I said, frightened. You kill people with heaters. You kill them with switchblades, too, don't you, kid? Oof, Johnny probably feels terrible. Dally said in a hard voice. Johnny gulped. Don't worry, Dally, he went on. He ain't loaded. I ain't aiming to get picked up for murder, but it sure does help a bluff. Tim Shepard's gang and our outfit were having it out with the socials tomorrow night in the vacant lot. We got a hold of the president of one of their social clubs. We had a war council. Yeah. Just like the good old days. If they win, things go on as usual. If we do, they stay out of our territory for good. Tubit jumped. Tubit got jumped a few days ago. Derry and me came along in time, but he wasn't having too much trouble. Tubit's a good fighter. Hey, I didn't tell you we got a spy. A spy? Johnny looked up from his banana split. Who? That good looking broad I tried to pick up the night you killed the Soch. That redhead? Cherry, what's her name? Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Sorry, I read a little quick at the end there. So you guys should just have um, Johnny's feelings about Ponyboy's family. And you should have, uh, for number four, what was that letter mostly about? Okay. Uh, the exit ticket takes you back to the poem. If you just look at your questions, I should have corrected your answers for you um, for the poem. So number one, the theme of the poem is that most beautiful moments in life are brief. The color gold, it mostly represented uh, purity and beauty. And then finally, which phrase supported your answer? Her early leaves a flower. Okay, so if that helps you to do your exit ticket um, and to go over the poem, nothing gold can stay. Uh, I, hope, I hope that helps you. Sorry, I went two minutes over, probably because I was showing you my fridge. And I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.